My wife and I have been married for a little over 20 years. I am 42 years old and my wife just won four, zero. We are happy and have two teenage children, Darcy, who is 17, and David, who is 15. I had already graduated from college and Macy was in her senior year of college when we got married. I'm an engineering manager at a mid-sized engineering firm in the city, and Macy is a paralegal at a large law firm. We are both active and healthy. We spend at least an hour at the gym several times a week. We also love being outdoors and often go hiking when the weather permits. I'm John Hopper. My height is 180 centimeters and my weight is about 82 kilograms. I'm not going to tell you that I'm some kind of super stud, but I can please my wife when we make love often. This usually happens about two or three times a week. Macy is about 170 centimeters tall, has C-shaped breasts, a flat stomach, and a nice curve to her hips. Overall, she is still very attractive. Heads turned on her whenever we went out anywhere, especially if she was dressed down. My children were wonderful. They were poised, got good grades, and enjoyed some popularity in their school. They were the greatest joy in my life, along with my beautiful wife. I rarely missed one of their games or school performances. I actively participated in their extracurricular activities. I helped them with their homework and took them hiking and camping on weekends. As an engineering manager, I mostly delegated the actual engineering functions to my staff, so I didn't have to work overtime or weekends. Travel was minimal, just to conferences once or twice a year. Macy sometimes had to work overtime when she was working on a big case, but it wasn't really that much. Okay, that pretty much sums up our lives. Obviously, if that was all there was to it, it would be a pretty boring story. Storm clouds were gathering that I wasn't paying attention to. They came in the form of a brash young lawyer who was hired at the law firm where my wife worked. His name was Brandon Howard. He was a big guy who was 190 centimeters tall and weighed about 105 pounds. He worked out a lot to relieve stress at work, so he wasn't overweight. He was opinionated, cocky, and arrogant. In addition, he was constantly lonely. I first met him at one of my wife's work events. He flirted with her continuously throughout the evening. She even flirted back slightly as I stood there. When I voiced my displeasure, she told me to grow up and that it was completely harmless. Once we got home, I tried to explain to her that while I trusted her completely, my problem was that it was completely disrespectful of her to flirt with another man right in front of her husband. I don't think she completely agreed with me that she was behaving inappropriately, but she at least acknowledged my concerns. It took another day or two before things returned to normal. Life went on for another six months. Macy was working on a major case that had been in the works for about two years. It was finally coming to an end. She started working long hours. I know what you're thinking right now, and no, she wasn't fooling me. It was a legitimate matter, and we discussed it thoroughly. She also called home at least once a night to make sure everything was okay. There were also several other people who worked late into the night. As I found out later, although they didn't really have an affair, the flirting still continued and even intensified. The matter was finally settled in favor of a client of my wife's firm. To celebrate, one of the senior partners rented a cabin about four hours away in the mountains. He invited everyone who worked on the case over for a weekend with his other half. I knew the partner pretty well, and we had actually been to the cabin a few times before. As I said, the kids were 15 and 17 years old. They were pretty responsible and were at an age where they could take care of themselves. We decided to leave them home alone rather than leave them with my wife's parents. Yes, I warned them against any bad behavior. With that decision made, Macy and I packed our bags and left Friday afternoon. We got to the cottage in the early evening and carried our bags to the room we were to use. Other than the fact that we had to endure Brandon flirting with my wife all evening, it was quite pleasant. After telling my wife of my displeasure at her continued flirting with Brandon, I decided to just leave her alone and socialize with Charles and Louise, the owners of the cottage. As I said, I liked Chuck and Lou, as they preferred to be called casually. We had quite a few similar interests. After dinner and sitting around the fire on the back patio, it was getting late, so I took my wife to put her to bed. I was actually very tired and still a little angry with my wife, so I moved away from her and fell asleep. The next morning, I woke up to the smell of coffee. Macy was still asleep next to me, so I quietly got out of bed, put on shorts and a t-shirt, and then went in search of wake-up juice. I walked into the kitchen and found Chuck and Lou busy preparing a hearty breakfast. 
Grabbing my coffee, I walked over and started helping. It was quite a production, as besides Chuck and Lou, there were two other couples there, my wife and I and Brandon. George was another lawyer. He was here with his wife, Anne. Kathy was another paralegal who brought her husband, James. Eventually, everyone managed to make their way into the kitchen just as breakfast was ending. By the time I picked up my plate and headed to the table, I found Brandon had taken my seat next to my wife. I'm sorry, but you're sitting in my seat, I stated kindly. Oh, dear, Macy replied. We're just in the middle of a conversation. Could you sit over there, please, just for now? But dear, I've been a little busy helping out. I was looking forward to sitting and chatting with his wife over breakfast. It's only going to be okay this one time. After all, we can talk all the time, but I rarely get to chat with my co-workers outside of the office. I was truly stunned. I decided that I really wasn't hungry after all, so I picked up my plate and placed it on the counter. Filling my cup of coffee again, I walked out to the back terrace and sat alone. Analyzing what had just happened, I remembered the expressions of several other faces when it happened. Something was happening here, and I had the distinct impression that I would not be happy with the outcome. As the day progressed, things were not going so well. Macy spent most of her time around Brandon. The only time she really spent with me was when we were both socializing with other people. When we went camping, she would walk with Brandon. We went swimming in the lake, and she spent time with Brandon. I managed to remind her several times that she is my wife, not Brandon's girlfriend. She just guffawed and said my imagination was running wild. By the time dinner was over, I was fed up. When we went out on the terrace to enjoy the evening and have a drink, I timed it perfectly. My wife had just sat down, and when Brandon started to sit down next to her, I moved over and pushed his hip out of the way as I sat down myself. Macy was not pleased. She threw one of her annoyed looks at me. I just smiled back and took her hand. She tried to wrench it away, but I only squeezed harder, refusing to let go. Instead, she practically refused to speak to me. It was a rather unpleasant couple hours as everyone else felt the tension. I had finally had enough. This weekend had turned into a complete disaster. I apologized, explaining that I was tired from the day's activities and got up to go to bed. I walked into the kitchen to refresh my drink. My plan was to pack before bed so I wouldn't be rushed the next morning before returning home. I was just screwing the cap on the bottle of bourbon when Macy walked in. John. I need to talk to you for a minute before you go to bed. Well, Macy, I'm kind of surprised about that. We had all day to talk, but you preferred to talk to everyone but me. In fact, you talked to Brandon almost nonstop, but you barely said a word to your husband. At least she had the decency to blush. Yeah, well, see, I have to explain it. Then this should be interesting. First of all, I need you to realize that I have never cheated on you. Ever. Judging by the way you acted this weekend, I'm not so sure about that. It's true. Okay, Brandon and I flirted a little bit, but that's it. He never once really even touched me except to help me through a few obstacles during our hike today. Now, like I said, I've been completely faithful to you, and it would never even occur to me to cheat on you. But there is no but about it. That's why I'm here talking to you. Now, I have to admit that there is a pretty strong sexual attraction between Brandon and me, the flirting we have been doing has led to some sexual tension. That's why I need to let you know that I will be spending the night with him. I needed to tell you and be upfront about it so it wouldn't be cheating. I'm not going to go behind your back. You're not. What? I said no, I'm not going to let that happen. Not gonna. Look, I've already made up my mind about this. There's just so much sexual tension between us that I have to do it and see what's up. It's just this one time. And then when we get home tomorrow... I'll be all yours again. Let me be perfectly clear. I won't accept this. I won't approve. If you go through with this, there will be terrible consequences. Ia won't, will, standing, for this. Baby, if you really love me, you'd let me do this once. Baby, if you really love me, you wouldn't even ask for it. Hell, you wouldn't even think about it. John, I really need to do this. It's just this one time, then I'll come back and be completely faithful to you again. Macy, do you remember our wedding vows? Especially the part about forsaking all others? Furthermore, since you feel the need to break this vow that you willingly made before God and before all of our friends and family, why should I believe this promise made quietly, without witnesses? Okay, John, I can see that you're angry about this right now. 
I really need to do this, so I'll see you in the morning. We can discuss it tomorrow on the way home. With those words, she turned and walked back outside. Just like that, 20 years of a happy marriage was flushed down the toilet. She expected me to be a faithful husband and wait for her to fly back into my open arms the next morning. I don't work that way. We've discussed this several times. More than one friend of ours had cheated on their spouse and we talked about it. We didn't have a hall pass to cheating. Cheating was a deal breaker and I don't care if she told me about it first. Cheating is not just acting secretly behind another's back. The very act of having sex with someone else is cheating. I poured my drink down the sink. I didn't need another one for what I was about to do. I went up to my room and gathered all my things. I left Macy's stuff as is. She could take care of her own shit. Turning out the lights in the room, I sat on the bed and waited. An hour passed before I heard everyone come back into the house and go to their rooms. I waited another half hour to make sure everyone was either asleep or distracted by something else. Grabbing my bag, I quietly walked out of the room and closed the door. I managed to make my way outside almost silently. Luckily, my car was parked the farthest away. It was a fairly new car, so it was quiet when I started it up and touched down. It was just after two o'clock in the morning when I pulled up to our house. I noticed that there was a light on, so it was obvious that at least one of the kids was still awake. Sighing, I got out, grabbed my bag, and went inside. Sure enough, both kids were already up and watching a movie. Hi, Daddy. What are you doing here already? I didn't think you'd be back until tomorrow, I mean, later today. Darcy noticed. Yeah, where's Mom? David added. Well, by answering David's question, I can answer both questions. Your mom is still at the cottage in her lover's bed. Yes, I'm an asshole for dragging our kids into the personal business between their mom and me. But I thought being honest with them would prepare them for the changes to come. Okay, maybe I could have at least handled it more diplomatically, but I didn't feel much remorse at the time. What do you mean, in your lover's bed? Is mom really cheating on you? Darcy was almost shouting. That's exactly what I meant. She cornered me this evening and told me she was going to sleep with someone else tonight. I decided I didn't want to wait for that, so I packed up and came home. I let her lover give her a ride home. I didn't think I would have to wait for her anywhere in the neighborhood. We talked some more, then I carried my bag to the spare room. I spent the next hour moving all my stuff from the room we used to share to what would now be my room. Luckily, the guest room was a second master bedroom with its own bathroom. The bed was pretty comfortable, too. As soon as I was moved, I fell onto the bed and fell into an exhausted sleep. I woke up a few hours later to my phone ringing. Glancing at it, I noticed it was my wife calling. I sent it to voicemail. Looking closer, I saw that she had left half a dozen text messages, and this was her third call. Just for interest, I read the messages and listened to the voicemails. First were her inquisitive questions about where I was and that breakfast was almost ready. Then they were concerned about where I was. The later ones were angry, demanding to know where I was, and demanding that I get my ass back there to pick her up and take her home. The latter informed me that she had to ask someone for a ride, and that she would kick my ass as soon as she got home. Oh well, I was already awake, so I should have gotten up and prepared to face the new day. Hurricane Macy would be arriving in about four hours, and I needed to get ready for the storm. I had a feeling she was going to be pissed. There was no remorse in the last message she left. I got up, showered, got dressed, and headed downstairs for breakfast. By the time I finished eating, the kids were up. I explained to them that they should probably stay out of the crossfire since their mother wasn't in a very good mood. Surprisingly, they just laughed it off. I had a bad feeling about what would happen when she got home. They didn't seem too happy with what she had done. Where the hell have you been, asshole? The slamming door announced the arrival of Miss Congeniality. I'm sorry. I just couldn't help myself. She just laid it out right there, like a low outside curve. I swung around and threw it over the fence. I really didn't realize a human face could be such a dark shade of red. O Oops, sorry, now it's turning purple. I was just about to pull out my phone to call an ambulance in case she had a stroke when the explosion went off. What the hell kind of idea was it to leave me out there like that? Do you have any idea how humiliating it was for me this morning when everyone found out you left and I had to beg for a ride home? You bastard. I was going to get you in bed tonight and fuck you, but now you can just forget about it. I just smiled back at her. 
I was actually amazed at the composure I was showing her. First of all, honey, I don't care how humiliating you may find it. Believe me, it was nowhere near as humiliating as it was for me when you jumped into bed with that asshole and everyone knew it. Secondly, I have absolutely no interest in ever having you again. You're damaged goods now. Do you really think I'd stick my buddy in your cesspool if I showed up again? How can you talk to me like that? I'm your wife. No, you're not. Well, maybe on paper you still are, but in reality, my wife disappeared sometime yesterday. You're just a cheating wench. What are you talking about? We discussed this last night. I told you about it beforehand, so I wasn't cheating. Okay, let me ask you a couple questions. One, did you sleep with someone last night who wasn't your husband? Yes, I told you I was gonna get in bed with Brandon. All right then, because you let someone other than your husband fuck you, you cheated. End of story. It doesn't matter if you told me about it or not. In fact, you didn't even ask. You said you had already made up your mind and that I had no say in it. I even told you not to do it. I told you I was totally against it. You just went ahead and did it anyway. But if you really love me, you'll let me do this. If you really love me, we can get through this. You stupid fool! If you really loved me, you would never even think of screwing that asshole. With those words, I turned around and went to the garage to work on my 1969 Nova. It was originally an inline six-cylinder engine with a three-speed manual transmission. I replaced the engine with a 383 small block, and the transmission was now a Borg Warner Super T10 four-speed. Yes, I know that many new gearboxes use a Restamod, installing a newer computer-controlled engine. Of course, they get more power and better fuel economy. I'm old school. I hate all that computer-controlled crap. It takes a computer genius just to keep the stupid thing running. With the old engine, I could screw it in, plug it in, and it would work. This is newer shit. You screw it in, plug it in, install a computer controller, then take it somewhere else and pay a guy another thousand to set it up before you run it. No thanks. Over the next few months, Macy tried to get me to talk. I wasn't interested. She also tried several times to get into my room late at night. I had changed the locks and she didn't have a key. To me, we were now just platonic housemates who happened to have two children in common. Why didn't I just divorce her, the kids? I didn't want to be just a part-time dad. I loved my kids and I wanted to be there for them. Besides, I only had three years left before David would graduate and go to college. Macy tried to get the kids involved to get me to talk to her. Nothing good came of it. The kids were seriously pissed off at what she did. She tried to confront me to turn them against me. It was Darcy who set her straight. Mom, Dad never said anything bad about you to us. You, on the other hand, have complained to us about him several times. Don't blame Dad for turning us against you. You did it on your own. Yeah, times were tough on the Hopper family. After four months, Macy started wearing very little around the house when the kids weren't around. She started wearing very sexy lingerie to try to lure me into her bed, or my bed, whatever worked for me. I have to admit, it was hard to resist at times. After all, she is a very sexy woman. Nevertheless, I was determined. I just couldn't get past her cheating. It's been six months since that night. I can't take it anymore, John, she said, dressed in a sheer black negligee. I need you. It's been six months since we had sex. I need you to come to bed and fuck me. Why don't you go to your lover and ask him to do it? I don't have another lover, John. I haven't had sex since that night at the cabin. I need you now, and if you refuse to fulfill your conjugal duties, I'll have to go out and find someone else to do your job. Well, that was an ultimatum. I looked at her and said, just don't bring them here. I will not tolerate you bringing any of your lovers into my house. Go to their home, a motel, or even the back seat of their car, but don't bring them here. A dejected expression appeared on her face. Then she turned and ran out of the room, sobbing. Choices have consequences. I don't want anyone else. I just want you. I heard her sobs as she ran out of the room. You may be wondering why I didn't take the opportunity to just sleep with her. After all, she is a very beautiful woman, and it's been six months since I've had sex with her. Well, that's true, and I was tempted. The problem was that I just couldn't get over the fact that she had willingly humiliated me in front of her co-workers. Every time I tried to think about sex with her, all I pictured was her co-workers laughing at me as she lay on her bed and slept with him. 
Sure, she was beautiful on the outside, but all I could see was the ugliness inside her. It was a week later, Saturday night. I was lounging in the living room, drinking a scotch and soda and reading a book. Macy came down the stairs and stood in front of me. She was wearing LBD jeans, stockings, 12-inch CFM heels, and her expensive jewelry. Her hair and makeup were done to perfection. She looked like she was ready to go to one of the swankiest holiday parties we used to go to together. John, I need you. I want you. I'm begging you. Please take me upstairs and fuck me. I can't take it anymore, so if you're not going to take me, I'm going to go find someone who will. I told you last week I'd do it if you said no. This is your last chance. Please don't make me walk out that door. You look really nice, I replied. I have no doubt you'll find someone to spend the night with. Just be ready because if you have someone else, I will consider it as your permission for me to do it too. If you walk out that door and sleep with someone else, I will consider it an open marriage where we are both free to have sex with other people. God damn it, John, that's not what I want. I willingly offer myself to you, but you keep turning me down. I don't want to sleep with other people. I sure as hell don't want you to have other women. You're driving me to it. It's not the same thing. If you don't want me anymore, why don't you just divorce me? Is that what you want? Do you want me to divorce you? Hell no, I want you to take me back as your devoted wife. You weren't very faithful to me in the cabin, so why should I expect you to be faithful to me now? Because I promised to be. And a little over 20 years ago, you vowed to be the same. What makes you think I can believe any of your promises now? Fine. If you do, don't wait. Fine. If it's your choice, I'll start making arrangements with a couple of ladies who have shown a pretty open interest in me. You're the one who's forcing the issue. If you go and screw another woman, I'll divorce your ass so fast you won't even know what hit you. I'll get the house, the kids, and more than half of the assets. You'll end up living in a one-bedroom apartment and eating prime ramen because of all the child support and spousal support you'll have to pay. Then, just to spite you, I'll interfere with your visitation too. Yeah, good luck with that. You do realize that kids are old enough to determine which parent they want to live with, right? You want to bet on who it's going to be? Go ahead. Go out and have fun. I really don't care. She cried again. What do you want from me? How long are you going to punish me? What can I do to make you love me again? She burst into tears. There is absolutely nothing you can do. You've already done it. Once and done. You slept with someone else and humiliated me in front of your friends. As for what I want from you... I want to coexist in this house as roommates for the next three years. Once David turns 18, graduates from high school and goes to college, we will divorce and go our separate ways. Until then, we will live in the same house and raise our children together. If you want to divorce me before then, go ahead. I can't stop you. Just keep in mind that the kids will probably want to live with me. That means I'll stay here in the house and you'll pay child support. Macy, I just can't trust you anymore. I can't live with the idea of my wife sleeping with someone else every time she's not home. I can't live with the thought of the next time you break your promise to be faithful. I only have two options here. The first is to divorce you now, and then the kids will have two part-time parents. The other option is to live in the same house, where we will both have freedom, but the kids will run the household with two parents. We will live in the same house, but will be divorced in every way except on paper. You are free to date as much as you want, as am I. We just won't bring anyone home with us. She did go out that evening after washing her face and applying makeup. As promised, I also started seeing other women. After a month, she seemed resigned to her fate. We were polite to each other and practically lived as platonic roommates while we raised our children. We acted like a family. When one of us had a party, we usually went together. We had to maintain this farce in public. Of course, it wasn't long before all of our co-workers realized what was going on. Heck, I dated a few single women in my office, as did she with some of the guys she worked with. Yes, she was constantly trying to lure me into her bed, but I mostly refused. Okay, sure, I gave in to her a couple times. She was still a beautiful woman, and after a couple drinks, I let my little head make the decision. I always wore a condom with her, and it was sex, not lovemaking. So, is that it? Said Macy with tears in her eyes. That's it, I replied, loading another box into my truck. Thank you for 20 wonderful years, Macy. That was 23 years ago. I know. Yeah. Tears came to her eyes again. It's been a little over three years.
David had just moved into his dormitory for college. Darcy was about to start her freshman year at university. The house was sold and we were packing up to move out. We were moving apart in different directions. The divorce had already started and we were just biding our time until the final judgment was handed down. The assets were split 50 50ths. The kids' college accounts were already fully funded. I still love you, you know, she whispered. I know I do. I'm sorry. I am too. She turned to look at me, tears streaming down her cheeks. You will. Will you call me sometimes? Come to see me sometimes? Maybe we can see each other once in a while? Please? No commitment, just to see each other. My hatred for what she had done had long since dissipated. I no longer felt the same love, but I didn't despise her either. In fact, I saw her as something of a friend. Besides, we still had kids to bond over. And frankly, she was damn good in bed. Of course she was. We can do that. Besides, we'd have kids' birthdays, graduations, weddings, and grandchildren's births that we'd both attend. Epilogue. The children forgave Macy for what she had done. Their relationship improved, but never returned to what it was before. Macy bought a small three-bedroom apartment so the kids could visit her when they came to town. I bought a small house with a couple acres of land and a workshop. It was a pretty small town, so we still saw each other occasionally. I would call her and she would call me. We even went out together a few times. No, we never had a chance to get back together, although she tried. We each went out quite a bit. She ended up having several pretty long-term relationships. I was just satisfied with not being married. I decided I had had enough of exclusivity. There are two reasons for me to be married. The first is to have and raise children. I had done it before and was too old to do it again. The other reason was to grow old together and have a companion in my old age. It didn't really matter much to me. I had plenty of friends and family if I got lonely. John, I have a very big favor to ask of you. I understand if you don't want to do it, but I would really like you to at least consider it. We were having lunch at a nice restaurant. It's been five years since the divorce. Ask right away. I assumed you wanted something when you asked me to lunch today. By the way, where's your boyfriend? Won't he be jealous that you invited your ex-husband to lunch? She smiled. No, he knows all about our past. He knows he has nothing to worry about. Besides, he was the one who suggested I ask you in private. He thought it might be more uncomfortable if he were here. However, he's willing to take your call if you want to make sure he's okay with that request. Okay. Cell phone rings. I'm interested in you. John, Martin made me an offer and I said yes. Good. Do you love him? Did you finally get past us? I'll never completely forget us, John. Still, I've made peace with it. As for Martin, I'm comfortable with him. I really love him, and we're very good together. I've settled down and I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. Okay, so what do you want to ask for? If it's my blessing, you have it, but you don't really need it. I have no say in the matter yet. No, well, I guess that's partly true. But what I want is for you to walk me down the aisle and marry me off at my wedding. Okay, where did this Mack truck come from? Let's talk about something extraneous. My mind just exploded with this. Uh, what? I want you to walk me down the aisle and marry me at my wedding. Macy, most ex-wives don't even want their ex-husbands to be present at their new marriages, let alone actually participate in the ceremony. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Then why in God's name do you even think it's a good idea? All right, all right, hear me out. I've obviously discussed this with Martin, and he agrees with it. I just sat stunned as she explained her train of thought. After listening to her, I had to admit that it made some sense, in a really strange way. John, you were the most important man in my life, except for my father. As you know, he's no longer alive. Furthermore, you were the last significant relationship of my life. I could talk David into giving me up, but it just doesn't seem right to me for my son to give up his mother. It's like I belong to my son. I just think it sounds a little strange. Instead, my heart belonged to you for most of my adult life. You were the last man who owned any part of me. Martin and I think it would be appropriate for the last man who owned my heart to give that heart to a new man. After all, even if you still have a piece of my heart, obviously you wouldn't necessarily want to keep it. This would be a great way to show that you're giving it up and passing it on to someone else who will care for and protect it. I think the symbolism of it would show that we are still friends. But our love is completely over and my new husband is now taking over. 
Yeah, that sounds crazy to me, too. I did call Martin. I did meet up with him that evening for a few drinks at a local bar. He liked the idea, too. Sure, he had been skeptical when Macy first brought it up, but after listening to her reasoning and discussing it fully, he liked it. I still wasn't convinced. It just seemed like there was too much weirdness to me. I also called my kids to get their opinion on it. Who is giving this woman away in marriage? Her family and her ex-husband are doing it. Yes, it just sounded wrong on several levels, but that's what she wanted. I have to admit that it seemed to work. I was passing the baton to her new man. I really felt that our relationship had finally come to an end and her new relationship was complete. Sure, there were a few comments, but for the most part, they were received positively. It certainly made the reception a lot of fun. Several ladies came up to me and asked if I wanted to start a new relationship since I had finally broken up my previous one. I think there might be three or four among these women who might take a swing at me. We'll see. At least my weekends over the next month or two won't be boring.